A lost child wanders the halls of the Mega Pizzaplex at 4 a.m. They shouldn't be here, and they're not alone. Tossing their Fazcam and hiding in the corner, the child holds their breath. Some time later, the coast appears to be clear, and the child grabs the camera and continues forward, peeking around the corner to make sure Monty is gone. They open the door into the hallway and begin forward when they see something in one of the side rooms. Is that Glamrock Bonnie? Getting closer, the child finds Bonnie in a sorry state, his arms, legs, and everything just shattered. It's 3.33 a.m. in the Theft Kingdom, and Theft King is hard at work editing. He isn't alone, though. Behind every great YouTuber is an equally great water bottle, and Theft King has the best water bottle. Water is great, and if you disagree, then I'd like to remind you that the human body is roughly 60% water, meaning that you're literally more water than you are anything else. The point is that you need to drink water, but water is boring. Enter today's sponsor, Air Up. When drinking using the Air Up hydration system, water flows through a pod that flavors it via scent. Once in your mouth, the scent flavoring separates from the water, and you taste it via a process called retronasal olfaction. Just fill up the water bottle, pop on a flavor pod, pull it up to activate it, and start sipping. If you don't activate the pod, it works just like a normal bottle, but when you do, you'll notice the water bubbling as it percolates through the flavor. Since receiving my Air Up bottle and pods, all I've drank is water, and I've drank a lot more of it. I promise you, the day you receive your Air Up hydration system, you're gonna end up drinking like 3 liters of water doing this the entire time. Then you'll go to the bathroom a lot. There are a variety of different Air Up bottles and tons of different flavors. You can even customize your order to your liking. I'm a citrus guy, so my favorite pods are the lemon and lime ones, but they have a variety of flavors. Click the link in the description to check out Air Up, and thanks so much to Air Up for sponsoring this video. Late at night, long after it's closed, a child finds themselves alone in the Pizzaplex daycare. They seem to be hiding inside the jungle gym from something when... They turn and spot the daycare attendant. They're annoying, but it isn't what the child is running from. Unfortunately, the daycare has but one rule. Keep the lights on. Look, puppies, subscribe.
Subscribe to Theft King for the puppies and kittens. In Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, we witness countless hints that children are disappearing at the Pizzaplex. Between the pile of clothing and the lost and found, the newspaper clipping and the bad ending, or even the fact that Gregory literally spells it out. Freddy, if I leave now, nothing will change, will it? There will be more disappearances. Yes. I am afraid that is correct. Unfortunately, this is a relatively underexplored portion of the game's lore. Who were these kids? What happened to them? The assumption is generally that Vanny used the robots to capture them and extract their remnant to aid in Afton's resurrection. Let me ask you a question, sir. And if you buy into Matt Pat's latest theory, then maybe Afton's late wife is really the mastermind behind it all, but whatever. That's just a theory. A remnant theory. Thanks for watching. Think about Security Breach's Music Man vent chase sequences. They're not very scary, unless you're Astral Spiff and you're trying to beat the game without like touching your keyboard or something crazy like that. I don't know. Now, imagine those sequences look more like this. Speaking of Music Man, everyone is familiar with DJ Music Man's chase sequence. It's one of the most memorable parts of the game, even if it isn't especially mechanically interesting. Now, imagine that monster prowling the rubble of the Pizzaplex in the Ruin DLC. The sequences where you perform maintenance on Glamrock Freddy aren't very fun to play, and while they're a neat homage to the repair sequences from prior games, imagine if they were more... Squimpus-like. Imagine if they were more like a FNAF VHS tape. First, press down on Freddy's nose. He will now be in maintenance mode. Second, press down on both shoulder pads to unlock the chest cavity and arms. Then remove the arms. Finally, Gently pull Freddy's bow tie to unlock and open the chest cavity. Open the Open the chest In Frightbear Found's final tape, an employee manual is created for staff in the wake of the Pizzaplex destruction in the Afton ending of Security Breach. However, it quickly becomes apparent that somehow, other footage has gotten mixed in with the announcement. Fosbear Entertainment prioritizes safety, above all, and we are always looking for new ways to improve our excellent safety measures. We always are keen that our guests are safe and happy. This is why these rumors cause us great concern. Bear Entertainment would like to assure you that absolutely nothing happened that night. Everyone was safe. Everyone was happy. Everyone had a home. Everyone was warm. Everyone had friends. Everyone had family. Everyone was where they were supposed to be. 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 In an homage to the Banny scene from the Walton Files, we see a retro arcade version of Gregory frantically trying to avoid Vanny. 
The boy tries to escape but his attempts are futile. The boy must escape. He tries to escape. His attempts are pointless. He must escape. There isn't much time. He needs to be safe and warm. The boy tries to escape but is too tired, too weak, too exhausted. She is watching. She is watching. The bunny is here. The boy tries to escape. He must give up. The bunny is here. He must give up. He must give up. He must give up. She is here. She is here. She is here. She is here. No home. No friends. No family. No warmth. No comfort. The boy tries to escape but his attempts are futile. The boy must escape. He tries to escape. His attempts are wasted. He needs to escape. She is here. 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 She is behind him. She is behind him. She is behind him, she is behind him, she is behind you. <laughs> Gregory, your friends are worried about you. Please come out. Gregory, I may have lost my temper earlier. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Please come out. Why don't you come out and we can play a game together? Gregory, let's get you home and put you to bed. Finally, we see Vanny kneeling before Glitch Trap? Or is that just Fredbear era Bonnie now? I don't know, it's sort of weird to imagine that that's what Bonnie looked like originally, but that's what MatPat said, so. At the end of the tape, we hear Fazbear Entertainment's excuse for why employees shouldn't show up at the Pizzaplex anytime soon. Now, regarding work next week. Right now the Mega Pizzaplex is closed due to gas leaks throughout the establishment. Right, a gas leak. We have people working to fix this right now. However, it might be some time and we advise you to not come back to work next week. We will keep you informed on any changes to our plans. Thank you everyone. And remember, smile, you are the face of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Five Nights at Freddy's has always taken a heavy influence from the analog horror genre. Monitoring these robots through an old CRT television gave the pizzeria this dark, dingy aesthetic that really made it feel like a game that was made in the era it was set in. Security Breach was different. It's a modern game that takes place in a sleek, colorful mall, and the analog horror aspects of it are honestly quite random. Look at Freddy and Friends on tour. It's presented as this degraded VHS tape, but Security Breach is likely set in the future. And it isn't just that those tapes are old either. Steel Wool Studios posted several promos to their YouTube channel featuring Monty Gator and Chica that utilize a distinctly VHS style despite taking place in the Pizzaplex. Furthermore, the fact that the Hidden Therapist recordings are on CDs just makes the game's time period even stranger. We have modern technology and displays, yet they seem to use analog rather than digital connections, yet the robots are clearly digital, yet someone is using optical media like CDs, it doesn't make any sense. Maybe that's okay though. Ideas like these make me optimistic for what could be done with the future of FNAF. I think there are really cool ways to take a brighter, more futuristic setting like the Pizzaplex and give it that classic FNAF vibe again. It might take some time for Steel Wool to really iron it out, but they definitely understand that the analog horror aesthetic works really well with Security Breach, even if it doesn't necessarily make any sense. Like, so what? It's Five Nights at Freddy's, it's about killer Chuck E. Cheese robots, it doesn't have to make that much sense. And Afton was happy. I've seen tons of FNAF VHS, and I love it, but most of it is highly derivative of Squimpus's original, which is years old now. It got me thinking, wouldn't it be cool if more people made Security Breach based VHS tapes? The game suggests a lot of really dark, cool, interesting things, and I'd love to see the FNAF community go nuts with their own interpretations of that stuff. I went looking and the only creator who seems to have done anything with Security Breach is Fright Bear Found, who made some really cool tapes that frankly deserve a lot more attention, so go subscribe to them. That inspired me to reach out to some VHS creators and see if they'd be interested in producing small one-off tapes surrounding the events at the Pizzaplex. So stay tuned for more of that. Anyway, because this is a brand new tape that hasn't aired anywhere else yet, I'm just gonna play the whole thing now so that anyone who wants a clean copy can get it. 